Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Eric. How are you doing today, man? Very good, buddy. So what I'd like you to do, just, um, you know, I'm not going to say too much. I mean, you know, I've already told you that we got this work tough stove here. Now these are the same guys making the stove that uh, made the uh, tail that we took a look mm -hmm. at in the past. And um, just curious about your thoughts, just the overall appearance, size, construction, and whatnot. So take a look through. Yeah, let me take a look here. Get a nice, uh, nice uh, tube. It'll go right through a uh, little portal there with a hot tent or shelter. It's nice, stainless, obviously. This is awesome. We got the uh, uh, draft manager that's nice nice spring on it says good tension I'm wondering where's uh where's choke full choke Usually well so here this is the first thing I guess while you're talking about it that I'm curious about your thoughts now um, are you familiar with these stoves have you used any of these in the past? I have not but okay. I'm familiar with stoves wood stoves wood stoves in general oh, but yeah. not one of the like no not, not a portable yeah me neither so all right so here let's pop this uh yeah pop that off okay. real quick okay so now if we take a look here Take a look inside. I mean, you can see. Okay, there. Yes. Okay, so level is choke, and it's designed to have some breathability, so it's not a full cutoff. Yep. And that's what I was wondering. Is you know, I mean, do you think it it should be a full cutoff or? I, don't know. I, I I'm not an expert. I don't know, but I will tell you this: with a full cutoff, you're going to choke out virtually all exhaust. Yep. And probably because this is designed to be inside a shelter, which is a closed quarter environment. Uh -huh. That might not be a good idea. Okay. Um, so I'm going to suggest that venting is never a bad thing. Um, I, I think there's probably a reason for that. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Um, but, uh, I mean, certainly that makes sense. So, yeah, as you can see, when the handle's at 90 degrees, um, you know, that is as choked as you can make it. Yeah. So. Sometimes also, if you do go full choke on a stove, you can overfire it. And this being really sheet metal, a portable stove, um, I mean, you could fit a lot of wood in here. So if you got, let's say, a two inch coal base in there, you might start to see some cherry red here at mm, night. Mm -hmm. And if you choke this 100%, you could potentially warp the steel. You get the warming rack, it's good for your mittens or whatnot. The riveting is uh, outstanding. I don't see any broken rivets off, sticking out, protruding. So fit and finish looks wonderful. Collar is strong, I tell you, man, quality, quality nuts and bolts here. Uh, even looks like a stainless uh, clasp. Get the aluminum on here, which should be able to reflect a little bit of heat. So you get some, uh, you're not gonna burn yourself with that, I can tell. You got the wiggle, which the stove is going to expand. So you want that, it's good. Okay. Good welds, clean welds. That's a stainless grate. That's huge. The vent, flawless. That won't come up or anything. That's great. I think my comment on that is it, it wiggles a little bit, like pull it in and out just a touch. As far as what the... The, the vent there. Here? Yeah. Again, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get crazy amounts of expansion, five or 10% on most steels. So, and don't forget, you're gonna get ash built up in here mm. over time. You're gonna get creosote too. Mm -hmm. So you need that level. And all it has to do is really is choke or allow airflow. So I think design purposefully with a little bit of loose tolerances, you don't want it to be too tight. I have a Yodel stove. It's made in Norway. Tolerances in that vent are so tight. You gotta get out there like every two days and clean it and WD-40 that. And, and so in the bush, you don't have time for that. No, no. You want no. that. So that no, I don't see any issues there. Okay, so that's good. Interior-wise, amazing. You actually have a replaceable glass, which is good. So as bolts are not riveted, that's a smart idea. Tempered glass is pricey, but take care of it. It should last as long as the stove. This looks like you just probably tilt it. Yeah. Heavy duty thick gauge steel, that's great. I've played with these in stores and the demos and things and they're really cheap. This is super thick. And then here's the, the tray, it's a good gauge as well. Looks like the same gauge as the stove, so quality, quality construction here. Oh my gosh. This is, uh, this is quite amazing. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos on different stoves, always wanted one. And um, all in all, not just saying it, um, 
this, this is before I even fired up. This is the, oh wow, this is the one I'd buy. I can already tell you. Even the aesthetics, the appearance, the rounded edges are really cool. I like that. I've seen these things 90 degree angles, and I just I like softer edges on that. Great legs, sturdy, riveted base for the leg posts. That's good. Yeah, this is amazing. Oh, let's fire this thing up. I agree. So. Let's fire it up. All right, so it's time to process some wood. How are we going to do that, though? Uh, I already uh, let the cat out of the bag. We got a couple of work tough blades we're going to be taking a look at today. So for a couple of additional videos. So uh, they may or may not see little snippets in this one, but we'll see. All right, well, we got to process the wood somehow. So my, my kung fu grip is going to be a little bit tough in this 19 degree weather. <laughs> so you better have some steel to show there, brother. All right, let's do it. All right. Hey Eric, let's take a different approach. All right, hold tight, buddy. Hold tight. Whoa! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Sick. Sick. All right, so Joe, the first thing that I'm trying to kind of work through is positioning of the dampers. Um, so on the exhaust side, we know straight up. Wide open is, to start it. All right, so full port, right? Yep, full port. And um, in the front, I mean, we have full port on the vent, but also if we had to, you know, we could certainly crack this thing um, and, and, you know, work with the door. Now, I know this is um, sort of a dual burn, so once the wood gets going, all the gases underneath here are supposed to catch. Now, if you look in the back, this is what I'm trying to figure out. See how there's that like fin in the back that, that's angled up? That's to allow the gases to travel through here and out the, the top. So, but this can also slide, and you see there's some holes for, you know, good airflow. Um, do you think this tray should be, I had it all the way to the back, and I, I don't know if that's gonna make a difference. Do you, want, do you think we want a little more airflow to start? Well, I think, I, I don't think, it let me see here. I don't think it has anything to do with airflow, but more so expansion. Yep. Because once you get the stove started, you're not going to be able to touch this. Yes, correct. So I'd probably leave it centered. Okay. The way I see it is this lifter back here and this input here with the permanent holes. Yes, correct. Believe exactly. it or not, I think it's going to create a rocket stove effect yep. with the airflow. So I'd leave that probably like that and okay. let's see where it goes. Yeah, you can set that in. Sure. And uh, we've processed a ton of wood here. Uh, so we actually have good, dry, cracked, seasoned oak. Yep. Uh, so this should burn nice and hot. Um, we just need ourselves a little bit of tinder and kindling to get this started. Yep. So maybe we'll process these down just a little bit smaller, get us some tiny little pieces. How long a piece you got? I guess say they're about 14. Yep. That's about the length of the stove here. Yeah, I think it's so, 14. Yeah, so we're close, right? Yeah. You may have to at some point go kitty corner, but I yep. think you got it there, yeah. All right. So what are you thinking? What are we gonna do? How are we gonna build this up? So I'm gonna keep just the two pieces here like this. I'm gonna put the, the fat wood, lay a little bundle of fat wood in the middle. Then I'm just gonna start cross piecing on top of that pile of fat wood. Give ourselves a little lay in there. A little lay in there, yeah, okay. with a little shelf so we have airflow from the fat wood and the base of our wood that will burn and catch embers. Yep. So we don't want to make it all flat so it'll, it'll suffocate itself. Right. We want some coals to drop down and start generating heat right away.
again my first experience with a portable camp stove like this but as we're still seizing it you can hear the metal expanding and it's getting hotter we don't have really much of a coal bed so let's open this thing up and get maximum airflow okay yeah I can actually hear it start to crank and this is fine um, I think the reason why this is happening with the the vent not doing all that it can do is right now it's dead air it is damp out and there is no wind and we're we're having the force push the uh, the fumes out the minute you get a little bit of breeze going outside of here it actually creates a draft and starts pulling up a little bit better um, so I think in a um, slightly windier environment you're not gonna have to open up the door to get this thing cranking but listen I'm just an impatient guy um, if the door was closed no matter what we still have a great system for airflow even if this is closed to generate more heat slow it down you still have this which is that underbelly of air come back to that vent in the back so this thing is well vented through and throughout but anybody will tell you more oxygen you get in the stove the quicker the faster you're gonna get the burn but that's amazing I could feel the heat just just so warm and it's cold day it's wonderful oh yeah and we're starting to get some coals so as you see up the uh, the flute there that's that's not smoke that's hot air that's heat so you want to capture some of the heat keep it inside the stove so that's amazing that you could touch that it's only warm that's incredible insulation that's a good spring uh, they did a nice job of not having the uh, the axle touch the metal with the uh, uh, grommets there so you could touch that nice look at that that's really nice let's go quarter turn start getting the heat inside we're starting to get some blueing in the metal which is great like a titanium look we're starting to get some yellowing in the uh, the bolts there so that means we're starting to get the metal to condition towards um, um, uh, seasoning so we're getting closer to have this stove fully broken in let's get a good coal bed in there a couple more logs I think after a full hour of a heavy-duty burn with that oak which is creates good coals and heat this thing will temperature will level off then it's broken in Something I noticed at the stove, pretty amazing, is with, this was frozen here this morning, and I do see a lot of stoves getting the ground completely hot and steaming. I've seen them on videos. This is still completely frozen. I mean, it's amazing that the way this is designed uh, for um, safety and really put in the heat towards the actual stove and above to radiate inside your hot tent or shelter. It's amazing, I mean, this is still completely frozen. That's just really nice design, guys. Put it in a skillet. A lot of times what I'll do is when I pre-cook my bacon, um, I just pour, there's so much grease, just pour it over the fire at night. But I'll leave a couple pieces that are kind of a little bit of fatty so that uh, when we start to warm the skillet, the uh, bacon grease helps uh, act as like a, like an oil or a butter, so it doesn't uh, stick to our food. So we'll let that uh, start sizzling. When we start sizzling the bacon, we know where to put the eggs and, and hash on. Little angle, obviously, it's very hard to get anything level. So what I tend to do is I put the bacon or sausage, whatever you had that's greasy, put it up top. So it rolls down and it uh, penetrates the other, uh, whatever else you're cooking, so we don't have, um, you know, it burned to a cast iron. Just watch your appetite, Eric. Careful, this is gonna burn. Oh gosh, put them on the warmer. <laughs> 
take that one off. Dude, dude that's a, it's, that, it's that hot. <laughs> Woo. Wow, it's that hot. Okay. Cheers, bud. Ah, uh, yeah. That's nice. Mmm. Mm-hmm. We'll make a mess. We'll get this here. I can tell you, I don't care. No. I can tell you, this is ridiculously good. The birds will get the rest. Oh, my God. For my cat. Mmm. 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 Mm-hmm. Wow. Mmm. 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 Mm. Oh my god. Oh my god. You said you made a killer hash breakfast. <laughs> Thanks, Hormel. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah. Mmm. Thank you, work tough. I, I know. Mm. Oh my god. Do you have any coffee left in that? I think we do. Look at it. That's a great picture, dude. I like it. That's a beautiful, look at the blooming in the back of the uh, stove pipe there. It looks good. So it's gonna break in even further over time. Yeah. Oh, that keep thing it. is freaking outrageous. Keep, okay. Keep it ripping today. Mm -hmm. I will. All right, so Joe, the Work Tough Stove WTS 380. Uh, we spent a good amount of time with that today. How do you feel? I love it. I truly do. Um, you know, I'm very familiar with uh, all different types of wood stoves for in the home, in the cabin, and how they operate. But um, for all that feature, functionality, and aesthetics with the uh, tempered glass window in the front and the side, the way it cooked through that frozen cast iron skillet, um, it's just such a pleasure. Yeah, I'm really excited for that. I gotta tell you, I mean, I personally want to use that with my pulk sled. Um, for my winter camping excursions. Um, you know, I'm not much of a car camper. Uh, so for me, I really do want to get that out in the bush. Um, but the main thing is that the size of the 380, I think is an advantage. Now they make a 500, the 500 is four inches longer. Obviously you're limited to the size of the wood that you can put in there, but as you saw, we loaded that thing and we had no problem with the wood that we had and our ability to process it down. So I think that's going to be good as the overall reasonable compact size. Um, it's not too heavy at roughly around 20 pounds. Uh, has excellent features and fit and finish overall. I'm glad we were able to cook one hell of a meal, man. That was delicious. It was amazing. <laughs> I tell you, the, the larger one may be better for like a semi-permanent shelter or if you're carrying with a snowmobile or something, ATV. Yep. But able to pack slide it in. Um, and again, you're, you're sawing to size and length you want anyway. Correct. You don't need anything more than that. Um, I can't say how happy I am just using it. Thank you so much for sharing it. And thank you Work Tough Gear for allowing us the opportunity to go in depth with the stove. It was an absolute pleasure. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm just glad to see that beyond their knives, mm. Work Tough branching out with the Work Tough stove and mm. their ability to execute at that level on a different lineup, on a completely different product. It's not even a tool, right? It's it's almost like an appliance. So like, you know, you have this company that now is not only kicking ass on their knives, but the, these beautiful stoves. So firing on all cylinders. 
They really are, and they're making an outdoor experience so nice to have, you know, for as far as the Tayal and the other, you know, the, 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 the was it the um, the Nomad? Yep. And the um, uh, Mount um, Mount Laguna. Mount Laguna. You know, really, they they come out of the box ready to go. There is no customization you really need to do. Um, and you'll see in some other videos the abuse we put that stuff through to be able to hold up as it did and not a single hot spot. No, my hands feel great. Well, uh, I was kind of cheating. I, was I, had, gloves, I had no but... gloves the whole day. <laughs> right. And we worked it as hard as we ever have and um, no burn, no hot spots, no chafing. Just a pleasure to see a company that's really um, uh, enthusiastic about the outdoor experience. Right. They're yeah. kind of keeping consistent with that theme. It, it is. It's yeah, exactly outdoor experience, outdoor gear, good mm -hmm. hard use gear, um, well made, excellent craftsmanship, and something I just really can't wait to see what these guys continue to produce. I know great designers so. behind the wheel, right? Yeah. You got um, Wingman. Yep. John. And yep. those you got Zeke. Zeke. Yep. Okay. So we're using uh, well known um, outdoor enthusiasts to really help with the input. And um, from the execution, uh, from the from the gear in your hands to field use, the output is just, it's impeccable. Great job, excellent work. And thank you again very much to Victor Lin from Work Tough Gear and Work Tough Stove. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to use and test and continue to grow um, with this brand lineup. And um, you know, I like to think that this is really just the start of uh, hopefully what's going to be a big, long, um, you know, ownership process and user process and um, in relationship in relationship with Work Tough. I'm extremely happy with everything. So thank you very much. And uh, Joe, as always, it's a pleasure. I love the time with you, buddy. Great cooking. Well, the time Excellent. with you, man. Yeah. So anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. We'll see you soon. Real soon.